Hey, it's Mario from Pilot Effect. In this video, we are going to be discussing wingtip vortices, also known as trailing vortices. Now, wingtip vortices do have an impact on flight operations due to the development of induced drag and turbulence, both of which come from the existence of wingtip vortices. Now, in this video, we're not gonna discuss induced drag or turbulence, rather we're just gonna focus on the vortices themselves. What are they, where do they come from, and how do they behave? When a wing is producing lift, there is a relatively high pressure region below the wing and a relatively low pressure region above the wing. It is this pressure difference that hold the aircraft up during flight. However, airflow is inherently three-dimensional and air tends to flow from high pressure regions to low pressure regions. Because of this, if we change our perspective away from the side view to the rear view, we can see that the air will flow around the wingtips from below to above. It is this flow that creates the wingtip vortices. As you can see, this movement results in the rotation of the air. Once the air has started rotating, it tends to continue rotating even after the wing has moved on. This is the conservation of angular momentum in action and it means that there will be little tornado-like flow patterns following behind the aircraft. These mini tornadoes are the wingtip vortices. Wingtip vortices behave in a predictable manner. First and foremost, they rotate down and out, so the left vortex rotates clockwise and the right vortex rotates counterclockwise, seen from behind. Second, wingtip vortices descend behind the aircraft this is because of the reaction of the airflow against the wing. The wing is pushed up and the air is pushed down as a result of the interaction that produces lift. We also know that vortices get stronger at lower speeds. This might be a little bit counterintuitive, so look at it this way. For an aircraft in equilibrium, the pressure difference above and below the wing doesn't change. It is fixed by the weight of the aircraft. When the aircraft is moving fast, the air flowing past the wing spends very little time there and only gets a small rotation imparted upon it. However, as the aircraft slows down, the air flowing past the wing spends more time there and as a result will rotate more rapidly. So higher speed, weaker vortices. Lower speed, stronger vortices. Similarly, if we look at an aircraft producing different amounts of lift at a fixed airspeed due to operating at different weights or accelerating into a turn perhaps, the strength of the wingtip vortices changes again. With more lift due to higher weight or higher load factor, the pressure differential above and below the wing gets stronger. This results in increased airflow around the wingtips and the resulting stronger wingtip vortices. At lower weights or lower load factors, the opposite happens, and we see weaker vortices. So overall, we expect to see stronger vortices at higher weights, higher load factors, and lower speeds. After the aircraft has passed, the wingtip vortices persist for quite some time. They only dissipate due to friction within the surrounding air mass, and this friction is quite low. As a result, wingtip vortices can last as long as three minutes after aircraft passage. And that's all I have for you on wingtip vortices. If you made it to the end of the video, please give a like, maybe subscribe. Otherwise, thanks for watching and have a wonderful day.